Good morning all. Today I'm going to take a look at the Vruzend uh, 1.6. This one is solderless and weldless, spot weldless, battery building kit for 18650 cells. So I bought myself a full 1.6 kit, version 1.6 that is, um, which has enough modules, enough of these end caps and metal hardware for I think 54 cells. Now I've got 55 cells in these uh, Wix power tool batteries which they were selling off for a pound each. Uh, so I can build pretty much any configuration I want. And I've gone for this system because uh, if I spot welded my batteries together then it's very difficult to take them back apart again. This is all done with just nuts. So if I build a, a configuration which I subsequently don't like, I can just dismantle it all, build something else. So let's take a look at how this system works. It's based around these plastic end caps. Uh, this is one half of the set I bought. They have little springy, quite a strong spring terminal connector which pushes onto the end of the battery. It's the same in the positive and negative end. I uh, use red for positives, uh, blue for negatives. And then there's a uh, brazed on stud here, which you can put nickel strips over. Here are some of the nickel strips. Uh, these ones are special wire connecting strips, but there's lots of these two hole nickel strips. You can put them in horizontal and vertical configurations to make up your series and parallel connections. And then the end caps are held onto the batteries by these barrel bolts. Now it seems that this barrel bolt thing is quite a new uh, feature. The 1.5 Vruzen system didn't have the barrel bolts and I've got a feeling the 1.0, which was the original system, didn't have the colour coded caps. Now there is a 2.0 system and a 2.1. 2.0 and 2.1 both have a different metal in the cap here instead of uh, spring steel it's some sort of copper alloy so it's much lower resistance and it's rated for much higher current these caps are rated for five amps each of course if you parallel them up you can have more than that the v 2.0 doesn't have the barrel bolt so it must have come before the innovation of barrel bolts and the v 2.1 has both the uh, higher current rated connector and the barrel bolts. This is a 1.6 so this has the steel spring steel connector rated for 5 amps. I've got a feeling the uh, the new caps are rated for 20 amps or even 25 for short durations but these are rated for 5. Let me explain how important the barrel bolt is. So the end caps, let's take these two apart, push onto your cell. Now it's quite tight and of course it varies depending on the diameter of the cell, the thickness of the wrapping plastic. Um, and they to some extent hold themselves on, but over time they just slip off. And the barrel bolts are designed to hold the two ends together. So let me just explain where the barrel bolt goes. It actually goes here in the corner. So it sits there in the corner of the two end caps. So the only time you're going to be able to use a barrel bolt is if you have at least four of these end caps in a square configuration. And if you have more, of course, you can use more of these barrel bolts. They sit on the little shelves on these standoffs. These standoffs are designed so that you can put the battery pack down and it's not resting on its uh, metal work. But yes, it's these barrel bolts which hold the pack together. So in versions that don't have the barrel bolts, there is a tendency for these caps to just sort of slide off over time and the solution it appears back then before the innovation of barrel bolts was simply to put a couple of end pieces on and put cable ties around it but I do think the barrel bolts is a much better innovation and I must admit I wouldn't buy a kit that didn't have these. So I'm not going to use these grey cells Let's see if I can pull these end caps off they are quite tight although apparently they've loosened them since previous versions because they were so tight previously you had to use uh, a mechanical clamp to pull the ends together. These have been loosened. The plastic has changed I believe so the dovetails are just a nicer sliding fit and they do slide very nicely together. There's nothing to lock them in place 
uh, other than when you've completed your battery pack everything sort of holds together so for my first battery pack I'm going to use just four cells is that a Phillips? Yes, that is a Phillips. Uh, so I'm going to take four of the five cells out of this uh, 18 volt battery pack. Now it has occurred to me that these are going to be welded together with nickel strips. I'm going to have to pull those strips off. But that might leave little tiny pips on top of the connector and that wouldn't be an ideal surface to mate in with this spring loaded uh, sort of flat button connector. So it might be necessary to grind away any excess metal to try and smooth it down. So here are my cells. They're Samsung INR18650 13Q. So they're 1.3 uh, amp hours each, a fairly low capacity, but they're going to be uh, ideal for just testing battery packs. And the low capacity helps me because I want to be able to charge them reasonably quickly, discharge them reasonably quickly, watch the charge and discharge. Uh, sessions and use uh, active BMS components and all that sort of stuff. So the BMS in this was pathetically uh, small, did very little, so that can just be cut away. And let's start trying to get some of these cells out. So let's cut the red wire here. Oh no, maybe I should have cut the black wire. No, I think we're okay cutting the red wire. Um, I think I'm going to cut through this fuse so that I can liberate um, the other end of the pack which is there and then hopefully the whole lot will just drop out sort of drop out looks like the end two cells are held in I've got the um, the misters there so I'll just take those out and there are my cells so now I've got to see how easily these things uh, can have their tabs pulled off so uh, sticky so how easily does that come off? Let's get my pliers. I think I'll do it sort of sardine can style and just roll it off. And yeah, so that's come away, but it's left a lot of detritus there. So I'm going to have to try and cut that away and then remove the tiny little spot weld pips, probably using some sort of grinding wheel. I've got some little uh, grinding wheels I can, which I can put in a drill. So I'll take the negatives off first because I believe there's less chance of creating a short. I mustn't mix that up with my Vruzend kit. Yeah, these spots, spot welds were very good. So there's definitely metal stuck onto metal. And that does present, as I say, a bit of a problem with the slightly proud spikes uh, there, which wouldn't be an ideal contact because it's a very small contact area so definitely going to have to grind those down. I may not do it initially because I'm not going to draw a large current from this but uh, yeah you can feel the little pips there. So I've liberated four cells now they do still have little pips on them so they're not going to be ideal uh, in terms of a good connection but I will deal with that later. I've got to think of a way of grinding this without all the grind dust getting inside there whether even that's a problem not so much of a difficulty on the negative end. Now I watched a few videos on building the Vruzen system. I think they were Vruzen uh, videos. The guy said he put his dovetails uh, top and right, which seems like a good way to start. So let's start assembling some of these. Now I'm going to be building um, a 4S, 4 in series, just one in parallel, just these four cells pack. But in order to use the barrel bolts, uh, the only figure configuration that's going to work is to do them in a square. So I want a square configuration. Let's get some more of these things. Uh, I'm, and I'm alternating red and blue. So if I want my dovetails top and right, I think I want it like that. But sometimes you'll assemble this and you'll find that you've uh, got yourself into a corner and you can't you painted yourself into a corner and can't get out. But that looks fine uh, for the one end of my pack. So let's make another one of these. Now there was some comment about how to position the dovetails relative to the slots at each end of the pack. And I can't quite remember what it is. It shouldn't matter too much because uh, these strips can run in any direction. It might just uh, be for the sake of having the thing level. I can't remember. 
But the important thing about using this uh, square configuration is that I can put the barrel bolt in. So let's take a look at how that looks with just three of these pieces. So the barrel bolt slides in. Now it doesn't really matter where you end it, but the bolt, which has a fairly wide pan head, sits on the little shelves on these uh, standoffs. So let's screw the bolt down mostly and it sits there and uh, it'll be the same at the other end but let's get this fourth piece on now uh, yes that's good because it slides up from underneath so that slides up like that and then that barrel bolt can hold both ends of my uh, square pack together okay let's start putting the cells in obviously the negative end goes to the blue now fortunately these aren't too tight uh, they're actually pretty reasonable they slide in and out which does mean that the barrel bolt is actually fairly essential positive into the red I suppose I could have all my Samsung's facing out because I'm quite proud of the fact that they're genuine Samsung's uh, so that's a pause so that goes in there and that's a neg so that'll go in there. So now I need to get um, a square end made up to go on the other end and then put my screw on to hold the whole thing together. So now what I really want is um, slides opposite slides. I think I want that. And dovetails opposite dovetails. That's not quite what I've got. Yeah, yeah, that's it. But are they the right uh, polarity? Yeah, that looks like it could probably work. Um, now nothing's connected to anything at the moment, so uh, I'm not in any danger of shorting anything. So let's press that together. And now it's a case of putting the other bolt into the barrel bolt end and tightening it up. And for this, I think I need a couple of uh, chubby screwdrivers so they're not too long. Okay, now these are slotted screws, which probably isn't ideal. But uh, let's get one of the screwdrivers on one end. Perhaps it's all they could get. And start tightening the other end. Now in terms of how tight you go, the advice was uh, if the plastic parts, the dovetails, start to break apart, then you've gone too tight. But I found that you have to go fairly tight. Uh, that one's not an ideal screwdriver because it's only just fitting in the... Uh, fairly tight to actually get these things to slide in. Now, I'm just watching some of this lettering. There's SDI there. I'm just watching how these things come together when I start tightening this. I'm not entirely sure how tight to go, but yeah, that is sliding because I can see that eye moving into the shell. And I want to get this as tight as I can get it, but obviously not so tight that these ends start to break apart. I've got to be careful not to short things out as well. So that certainly seems to have pulled in. What I'm going to do is just press on this and see if there's any more movement. And I don't think there is. So yeah, I think those ends are now tightly on, held on by the barrel bolts. And now we can start assembling these straps to get this into a four cells in series pack. So now it's time to put some nickel strips on to start uh, putting these cells in series. Now the first strip, of course, it's not going to be a problem because nothing's connected to anything yet. So I can put that pretty much anywhere. And we've got the nuts supplied. Now I'm not quite sure whether these are metric. I think they might be M3s because they do seem to work with a 5.5 millimeter nut spinner. So I'm going to use these to spin the nuts on. I wasn't quite sure whether this was an American system, um, which would probably mean it wasn't metric, or whether it had come from somewhere else. And there is a bit of a clue. My system came in this box, which actually says Rusen, made in India. So is Rusen uh, part of the Vruzend name? Someone's written V1.6 on there. And does India use uh, metric nuts and bolts? Probably does. I think it's only America that's stuck to Imperial. Um, so yeah, a bit of a clue there, but uh, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff on the electric bikes here and some really interesting stuff on the side. 
about uh, greener world and stuff like that. So I use this nut spinner to uh, get the nuts on quickly and in fact I can use that to sort of torque them up because the torque I can apply just on this bare nut spinner is probably adequate. So now uh, on the other side I'm going to strap these two and then these two will become my ends of the series pack. So when you put the next pieces of uh, nickel strip on you do have to just be a little bit careful to double check where you're going. So I want to go on the other end across this way. So I want to go like that. So just be a little bit careful, check what you're doing because you don't want to short uh, two cells in series to each other because then things would probably get quite hot. So tighten these down. So let's check once again, there's my horizontal. So here I need two verticals. So let's put on another vertical like so. Get the nuts on there. And then this battery pack is essentially finished, I think. Well, I think that's my first battery pack uh, completed. I've got a horizontal this side, a couple of verticals this side, which brings these two as my final terminals. Now, have I got something I can power up? Yes, I think I have. I've got this little uh, cluster of 12 volt bulbs, uh, which goes into this uh, 2.1 millimeter socket and some bare ends. Now this is nominally 12 volts, but they're quite happy at about 14 or 15 because that's what car alternators supply. Uh, this, I think I measured these at 3.9 each. So we've got four threes of 12 and 4.9s. It's sort of pushing 16, it's about 15, but it should be fine for this. Let's just see whether we get some illumination. Yep, so my battery pack works. Now, of course, at the moment I've got no BMS elements. I've got nothing to um, prevent from an overcurrent situation. I've got nothing uh, monitoring the individual cells to prevent any one cell going below its minimum or any one cell going above its maximum. This is just a bare pack. I could charge this with a constant current constant voltage uh, charger, but it would be better to wait until my BMS is arrive and I've ordered a couple of different ones so I can stick them on the side of this and the BMS can monitor the individual cells. But um, for the moment, all I wanted to do literally was uh, sort of start using the Vruzend system, uh, get my horizontal and vertical straps on there, get a barrel bolt holding the whole thing together and build my first lithium ion pack. And there it is, 4S1P. Cheerio.